let's talk about romance. <laughs> Hello my loves, welcome back to another video. I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be talking about some of the top romanticy books on my TBR right now. One disclaimer that I will get out there straight from the offset is that this is not the entirety of my romanticy TBR. I have many books on my romanticy TBR but these are the ones that are at the forefront of my brain right now, the ones that have my peak attention and basically I can't read them yet so I'm just going to talk about them instead. <laughs> a lot of these I just have on Kindle Unlimited rather than actually owning them but the self-restraint I am showing in just keeping it to Kindle Unlimited instead of going out and purchasing them all. I'm honestly quite impressed with myself, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but I have been burned by romantic books before and so I always feel like if I can get it on Kindle Unlimited and read it on there first and then if I end up enjoying it, purchasing it afterwards, that is definitely the better way to go. But there are some which I just feel like I'm gonna absolutely adore and I really want to read them right now. So let's just talk about them and if you think of any recommendations based on the ones that I'm mentioning in this video then I would love to hear them down below because I definitely go based on recommendations for romanticy more than I do any other genre really and if you're not familiar with what romanticy is it basically is just romantic fantasy. It's fantasy books that have a very heavy romance plotline and that is one of the main plot lines if not the plot line of the book. I'm very used to just calling it fantasy romance because the shortening of fanro used to be used a lot but I feel like romancy has just become a more common phrase now so that's what we're going to be calling it and that is usually the name that I find a lot of my recommendations under now so I'm glad it's catching on because while it has always been a thing I feel like it's much easier to find now but anyway these are a few books that I am very particularly interested in right now. So first up we have Blood Orange by Karina Hale. This is one that I keep seeing everywhere and I feel like Karina Hale has a few books that have very similar looking covers that I've just not really been able to differentiate between them too much but this is the one that I've seen popping up most often and so that's the one I'm gonna go for. So this is A Witch and a Vampire Romance. We're following a woman called Dahlia whose parents were murdered when she was younger by vampires and so she was raised in a kind of witchy assassination guild of sorts to become an assassin of vampires and she sent on a kind of assassination mission of sorts to murder an infamous vampire so infamous that he is actually said to be the inspiration behind Bram Stoker's Dracula but she ends up becoming closer to him than planned. It turns out that she is actually the reincarnation of one of his past loves, someone he has loved and lost but he doesn't realise that because she's wearing a glamour to obviously try and hide her identity from the assassination attempt. So it says on Goodreads that this is a romance that is forbidden. A student teacher situation, which usually when that happens, it is like the student of the teacher, but it, I don't know if that would be the case in this one. But also a second chance romance since we have this idea of reincarnation as well. So there's a lot going on in this one and I am very intrigued. I really hope that Karina Hale is an author who I can get behind because she just seems to have a lot of books out that I really gravitate towards in terms of the cover and the design and everything. So if that matches the vibe of the stories then I feel like we could get along. Next up we have a book that is taken the world by storm at the minute and that is The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. I will just say right now that I do not understand this title. I'm presuming that The Wings of Night is like a, a group or something because otherwise it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> But either way, this is a romantic book that I have seen absolutely everywhere and I don't think I have seen a bad word about this book yet. And that just has me really, really intrigued. I've seen a lot of grand claims about this being the book that everybody should read after Akatar, but I feel like when it comes to romanticy, then that phrase is kind of thrown around a lot. That is the phrase that is the rival of every epic fantasy being for fans of Game of Thrones and, you know, the sort of book that things are always compared to. And I'm actually just going to read out the synopsis because I feel like if I try to explain this without the synopsis, it's just going to become really convoluted because this is that the adopted human daughter of the nightborn vampire king, Aurea carved her place in a world designed to kill her. Her only chance of becoming something more than prey is entering the Kajari, a legendary tournament held by the goddess of death herself. But winning won't be as easy amongst the most vicious warriors from all three vampire houses. To survive, Aurea is forced to make an alliance with the most mysterious rival. Everything about Rain is dangerous. He is a ruthless vampire, an efficient killer, an enemy to her father's crown and her greatest competition. Yet what terrifies Aria most of all is that she finds herself oddly drawn to him. I mean, need I say any more? I just, I'm already here for the, the rivalry. Also another one that's about vampires. I actually didn't think this was about vampires. I for some reason thought this was a fair book, probably because of everybody's comparison to Akhtar, but I don't have a problem with vampires. I like vampires, so 
very intrigued to see what this one is like and already the sequel seems to be out so I'm hoping this is one that I can very easily just jump on the bandwagon for and have a grand old time doing so. Next up we have The House Witch by Adele Hash. Now this one is I think quite different from the rest of them in that the rest of them are quite heavy fantasy potentially spicy sort of reads whereas this one definitely leans more into the cozy fantasy vibe but this one just sounds a lot of fun because in this one we are following Finley who becomes part of the royal household and he is a little bit of an enigma. Nobody really knows too much about him and he is completely fine with that. He wants to stay an enigma but the household won't let him. The house witch and his very own familiar end up ganging up against him and basically revealing his secrets and when they realise that he has powers that he failed to mention before he ends up getting wrapped up in the royal household affairs in more ways than he ever wanted to and we also end up getting a messy love life along the way. Now I have heard that this one is meant to be quite humorous quite lighthearted and I think that this could be a very nice lean into the cozy fantasy vibe with also just a little bit of romance as well. Next up we have Bow Before the Elf Queen by J.M. Curl. This is one that I keep seeing not too often but every time I do see it I'm just like gimme. I don't know what it is about this book that just has my attention every single time I see it but I need to read it. This one also has the enemies to lovers trope which I think is becoming more and more clear as something that I like reading about but in this one we're following a woman called Layla who is in hiding because she is apparently the elf king's mate and she does not want to marry him but he's gonna come and find her. So she's in hiding and in the meantime she is training to murder him basically because she wants to get revenge on the unlawful prosecution of her parents who fought for her own freedom. So she knows that this elf king is coming for her. She is trying to stay out of his hands and she knows eventually that he will catch her and is planning a speedy getaway. She plans to just murder everybody who comes for her and get away as soon as she can. Apart from doesn't quite go like that, she ends up meeting said elf king and upon meeting him realizes that he has a secret meaning that he is near impossible for her to kill not only that but she is also holding on to a secret because we love secrets around here that actually makes it forbidden for him to love her so great grounds for a marriage brilliant start excited to see what happens <laughs> Next up we have one which I do actually own and I've had for a little while now and it's been one that I just keep seeing pop up and I'm just like I need to get around to reading this because this is To Bleed a Crystal Bloom by Sarah A. Parker. This one is a dark Rapunzel retelling. We are following a girl who was basically plucked out of a massacre at a young age and taken to become a ward for a powerful high master and kept within the castle walls away from all the monsters that are lurking outside. And as she's growing up she's just more and more intrigued by this guy who's taken her in as a ward. He's very mysterious, there is much interest there and gradually over time it is becoming harder and harder for the monsters that are lurking outside the castle not to start creeping in to the inside. So the monsters start coming in, secrets start coming out and I imagine a hell of a lot of drama along the way. Next up we have A Cursed Kiss by Jenny Hickman. This is one that I have been vaguely aware of for some time now but I just I feel it pulling at me lately and I don't know why but this one is set on an island that's plagued by magic and that is not a good thing in our main character's world but this one sounds like a very vengeful sort of story because we are following Keelan who enlists the help of a vengeful witch to help resurrect her dead sister who was killed by monsters. Now it's said that the method of death through these monsters is that they seduce people and give them a cursed kiss meaning that they will then die so she's adamant on not only resurrecting her sister but murdering the monster who caused her death in the first place. Somewhere along the way she also enlists the help of a roguish half fae who does not seem to like the distinguished society and is just very much not caring of other people's opinions and he doesn't really want to help her but she gives him an offer that he cannot refuse and he ends up getting tangled up in this cross-country curse-breaking mission that she is apparently dragging everybody on. <laughs> this honestly sounds like a lot of fun and I love all things to do with curse-breaking so I'm intrigued to see how romantic this actually is because the synopsis to me leans more towards the fantasy element but either way I'm intrigued. <laughs> Next up we have Radiance by Grace Draven and every single time I mention this book so many people in the comments are just like you need to read this and I feel like this one is quite different from the books on this list in that it has quite a different relationship dynamic in that it's just two people kind of teaming up to get to know each other and like making the best out of a bad situation because this one and I quote follows a prince of no value and a noble woman of no importance so great start lovely compliments that both of those characters have but in this dynamic we have the guy who is 
a spare prince. He is the prince who is not going to become the heir to the throne. He's just kind of there, basically just doing whatever he's told. And in his dutiful ways, he ends up agreeing to an arranged marriage. But the woman he ends up engaged to is quite unexpected. Cut to our unimportant noblewoman and her very ambitious family trying to rise in the ranks by marrying their daughter off to this prince. Now, when these two meet each other, they both find each other hideous by their own standards because they are two different races of people. She is a human and he is something. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what. I initially thought that he was Fae and he still could be, but I don't know what they actually call themselves. They don't look the typical way that Fae are described in a lot of these books, but you know, they're different from one another and they initially are a bit like, oh, why did I agree to this? But then they end up making the best out of a bad situation, coming together and basically learn how to navigate this world of duty and politics together. And every single time I've seen reviews of this, people have said it's very wholesome, which it doesn't look like it based on the cover. Like it has quite a typical fantasy romance cover and they in themselves tend to be quite dark. So I am quite intrigued to see how this differs from other romantic books because yeah, I don't think I've read a dynamic like that where it's just two people learning to be companions. I am wondering if I'd still be interested if the dynamic was just switched on its head. <laughs> and then the final one I'm going to mention in this video is Her Soul to Take by Holly LaRoe. This one is the complete opposite of Radiance because this is quite literally just demonic murder. <laughs> We're following a guy who murders people for some unknown reason, at least based on the synopsis, we don't know yet. And he is given the task to murder a woman and he decides not to, he cannot. He is too intrigued. But this cult that used to control him is very adamant that she needs to die. And he's just like, mm, I'm not all about that though. Meanwhile, she realizes that the only way she's gonna stay alive is if she gets as close as possible to this guy who is possibly a demon. I just know there's demons in here somewhere. I don't know whether he is the demon. If the cult are demons, I, there's demons somewhere. <laughs> But she's trying to stick close to him. He's trying to avoid murdering her. And somewhere along the way, a romance comes out with that questionable beginning, but one that is full of drama that I love to read about. <laughs> so those are just some of the books that are on my romancy TBR. Like I said, I do have many more, many, many more. I have just a whole stack of Emma Han books to read. I still need to continue with the, the Blood Grey series, the Bargainer series I still need to finish. There are a lot of books that I want to read that fit within this kind of category of books, but where is the time, man? <laughs> I don't know, but we're just gonna make it worse because I do want your recommendations, so do leave them down below. I have read a fair few of at least the first book in a lot of the popular series, so if you end up saying anything that I have already read that I will just let you know and I'll let you know my thoughts on it as well, but otherwise I am all ears. I don't really have any particular things that I would say no to, so hit me up with the recommendations. <laughs> but yes, I am going to leave it here, so if you made it this far into the video, then leave the heart with sparkles around it as the emoji comment, because that seems a little bit like both romance and fantasy, so we'll go with that. <laughs> but for now, I'm gonna love you and leave you and let you get on with the rest of your day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so we know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you next time with a new video. Bye.